Homo erectus, the ancient ancestor of modern humans, lived for over one million years, making it one of the longest-lasting hominin species. First emerging in Africa, erectus gradually spread into Eurasia, occupying diverse habitats across Africa, Asia, and Europe. During this time, erectus hunted and interacted with a variety of now extinct animals. Here is the extinct animals that Erectus would have seen during the species' early days, between around 1 million and 2 million years ago. Contrary to the popular image of early man being an endurance hunter, chasing down wildlife on the hot African savanna, early man also hunted in dense forests and cold mountains, where they would have used ambush hunting tactics and brute strength to bring down large animals. This ancient ancestor inhabited Africa and later spread into Eurasia, inhabiting diverse environments ranging from savannas to temperate forests and cold northern latitudes. They were likely very muscular, if the attachment points for muscles on their bones is any indication. Their strength came from was from a life spent stabbing mammoths, elephants, and other megafauna to death, dismembering their carcasses and carrying the meat back to their caves. Although they never saw dinosaurs, the time period during which Homo erectus lived overlapped with the Pleistocene Epoch, which was marked by frequent glacial cycles, environmental changes, and a series of extinctions. Peking man from China and Java man from Indonesia are the most famous examples of Homo erectus. Their ability to adapt to new habitats and exploit various resources allowed them to hunt a broad spectrum of fauna. Erectus's time overlapped with several types of extinct megafauna, including mammoths, straight-tusked elephants, stegodon, giant orangutan-like apes, and other hominins. Our ancient ancestor also lived alongside formidable predators, including saber-toothed cats, such as Smilodon. These large carnivores were dominant hunters in the ecosystems of Africa and Eurasia, posing both a threat and an opportunity for Erectus. Fossil evidence indicates that Erectus sometimes scavenged meat from carcasses killed by saber-toothed cats, taking advantage of opportunities when the predators left their prey unguarded. In some cases, Erectus may have even directly hunted these predators, leading to a complex dynamic between early humans and large carnivores. However, the eventual extinction of saber-toothed cats is likely due to competition from Homo erectus and the decline of large herbivores their primary food source. As Erectus populations expanded and increased their hunting activities, competition for prey animals would have intensified, contributing to the challenges faced by other large predators. Although Erectus may have hunted saber-toothed cats directly, so their presence in the ecosystem may have influenced the extinction of these apex predators. Erectus's survival in varied environments required them to develop hunting techniques, tool-making skills, and resourceful behaviours that allowed them to thrive. Indeed, Homo erectus ate everything they could catch, including sometimes other hominins. They quite likely caused the extinction of close relatives such as Australopithecus afarensis, the infamous Lucy, and Paranthropus boisei, who is described as a gorilla head on a human body. Africa was a planet of the apes at one time and the extinction of these hominins has created a giant gulf between modern man and other animals. Let's not whitewash prehistory. Early man was a hunter and not a scavenger, and enjoyed the challenge and social bonding of the hunt. The aggressive nature of these early ancestors drove other hominins, especially the peaceful vegetarian species, into early extinction. Other species of smaller hominins, such as Homo nalidi and Homo floresiensis, managed to possibly even outlive Homo erectus in their niche environments, likely by avoiding their large-brained, highly aggressive kin. Indeed, early man seems to have preferred to hunt the largest male herbivores rather than go after the young and weak as other predators, such as lions and tigers, usually do. For example, the straight-tusked elephant was a massive animal, standing up to four metres, thirteen feet tall at the shoulder, and boasting long, straight tusks. These elephants thrived in forested environments across Europe and Western Asia during the Pleistocene Epoch, where they would have coexisted with Erectus populations. Archaeological evidence suggests that Erectus may have hunted straight-tusked elephants, using their meat, bones and tusks for food, shelter and tools. 
It was the invention of hunting tools that separated Homo erectus from other animals and put him on the path to becoming human, rather than just an animal chasing other animals. Like mammoths, straight-tusked elephants presented both challenges and opportunities for erectus. Although these large animals were difficult to hunt, their size made them a valuable source of resources. In some archaeological sites, tools and bones found near Paleoloxodon fossils show signs of butchering, suggesting that erectus interacted with these elephants in meaningful ways. Nevertheless, the extinction of Paleoloxodon appears to have been driven mainly by changing conditions, such as forest shrinkage and habitat loss during the colder glacial periods of the Pleistocene. One of the most iconic animals Erectus encountered was the mammoth, a close relative of Asian elephants. Mammoths were widespread across Europe, Asia and North Africa, and they played a significant role in the lives of prehistoric humans. Fossil evidence suggests that Erectus used basic stone tools to butcher mammoths for meat and scavenge from carcasses hunted by other predators. Hunting large animals like mammoths would have been dangerous and challenging, requiring cooperation, strategy, and advanced tool use. Nevertheless, the rewards were considerable, as mammoths provided food, hides, and bones for tools and shelter. As Erectus populations grew and spread, they may have increased hunting pressure on mammoths, particularly in regions where food resources were scarce. While it remains uncertain whether Erectus regularly hunted mammoths or relied primarily on scavenging, the presence of cut marks on mammoth bones indicates that they interacted closely with these creatures. Now, DNA analysis of well-preserved mammoth remains from Siberian permafrost has revealed that woolly mammoths share a common ancestor with Asian elephants. There places the relationship between mammoths and Asian elephants closer than that of Asian and African elephants, indicating that Asian elephants are the closest living relatives to the extinct mammoths. One fascinating detail that illustrates the genetic connection between mammoths and Asian elephants is the presence of hair on newborn Asian elephants. While adult Asian elephants have sparse hair covering their bodies, newborns are born with a noticeable coat of fine hair which gradually diminishes as they mature. The presence of hair in baby Asian elephants is seen as a vestigial trait, a remnant from their mammoth ancestors. Mammoths, particularly woolly mammoths, evolve dense coats of fur along with a layer of fat to adapt to the frigid environments of Ice Age Eurasia. Although Asian elephants live in tropical regions today, the persistence of body hair in newborns suggests that their ancestors may have retained this feature as they adapted to different environments over time. This observation supports the idea that both mammoths and their elephant relatives share an ancient lineage and some traits that were advantageous in cold environments continue to appear in modern elephant species, albeit in reduced forms. In addition to the genetic relationship between woolly mammoths and Asian elephants, research has revealed that the now extinct straight-tusked elephant is also closely related to both of these species. While the straight-tusked elephant inhabited Europe and Western Asia during the Middle and Late Pleistocene, Genetic studies have shown surprising results, reshaping our understanding of the evolutionary connections between these elephants and mammoths. In Southeast Asia, Homo erectus also encountered Stegodon, a now extinct relative of large elephants. Stegodon species thrived in tropical forests and savannas, but they eventually disappeared from many regions as environmental conditions changed. On the island of Java, where erectus populations were established, stegodon fossils have been found in association with stone tools, suggesting that early humans hunted these animals. On islands like Java, where food resources were limited, erectus would have relied heavily on large herbivores like stegodon for sustenance. Hunting, along with environmental changes, may have contributed to the eventual disappearance of stegodon from the region, the extinction of Stegodon is thought to have resulted from a combination of habitat shifts and human hunting. Meanwhile, Gigantopithecus, the largest ape to ever live, also inhabited parts of Southeast Asia during the time of Erectus. Standing over nine feet tall and weighing as much as 1,000 pounds, Gigantopithecus was a herbivore that likely fed on bamboo and other plant materials. 
fossil evidence of this giant ape has been found in China and Vietnam, indicating that its range overlapped with Erectus. While it is unclear whether Erectus ever hunted Gigantopithecus directly, competition for food resources may have brought the two species into conflict. However, as Erectus expanded into new territories, they may have contributed to the extinction of many large animal species by direct hunting. For example, other animals that Erectus encountered, although not extinct, were much larger than today. For example, Cape Buffalo had horns ten feet across, compared to only half as large today. These beasts would have been a formidable challenge for Erectus, who seems to have known no fear when it came to hunting with his simple wooden spears. The extinction of some animals is widely attributed to environmental changes that reduced their habitat and food supply. Nonetheless, human hunting would have played a large role, particularly during periods when other prey species were scarce. Although Erectus lacked the advanced weaponry of later human species, their ability to cooperate in groups and their growing expertise in tool use would have made them increasingly effective hunters, contributing to the decline of certain large herbivores. In addition to wooden spears and stone axes, this ancient human also collected shellfish and made extremely sharp knives from the shells of giant clams. Bamboo, a versatile and abundant resource in many regions inhabited by Erectus, likely played a crucial role in their survival strategies. Archaeological evidence suggests that Erectus may have used bamboo to create tools, knives, spears and traps, showcasing their ingenuity and ability to adapt to their environment. Homo erectus may have fashioned bamboo spears for hunting, using them to target large herbivores or defend against predators. In concussion, our ancient ancestor lived in a world filled with diverse and formidable animals, many of which are now extinct. Their interactions with creatures such as mammoths, giant elephants, saber-toothed cats, gigantopithecus, and giant elephants reflect the complex relationships between early humans and their environment. As our understanding of prehistoric ecosystems continues to evolve, the study of Homo erectus and the animals they encountered provides important lessons about the challenges and consequences of coexistence with other species.